I never use my phone on airplane mode when I'm on an airplane. I only use it when I'm not. <clears throat> um, I want to share, when I start sharing here in a minute, I want to share on the prodigal son, more specifically the father and the prodigal son. <clears throat> I'd like to do this song. Um, <clears throat> and it's about the uh, it's about the father and the prodigal son and <clears throat> I think most of you have heard it before uh, the title of the song is put on the garments and this is the father wanting the son wanting the one who looked so bad and did so many things wrong but just not wanting him all down and freaked out and, you know, I mess up all the time and I'm not worthy to be your son. Remember, that's what he says. I'm not worthy. He, the father's trying to get rid of that stuff. And so put on the garments that I want you to wear, not that, that uh, you've been clothed. What you've clothed yourself in is confusion and despair. I've clothed you with the robes of righteousness the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, beauty for ashes. And uh, for those in mourning, you pour out the oil of joy. And for our crimson, you give robes of white and pure. For our weakness, you have made us all your bride. You've closed us with power from on high. And I, would, I think before I change that one, you closed us with the power of your life. And then the last verse is, my own rightness was just as filthy rags saturated with the stench of my own way. You saw me coming, this is the Father, saw him coming. And you ran to meet me there. And I changed this last verse to read, now I love myself in your embrace. And, and um, that might be a little hard to understand, <clears throat> but if you see it in the context of the prodigal son and the father, and the father runs to meet him and throws his arms around him and kisses him. Well, everything in his mind was how messed up he was. And he's, you know, he's being enfolded into the father, into his heart, not just into a hug. He's being enfolded into the father's view. And, um, uh, so I just pictured myself as, as that prodigal and I pictured that moment and it had to say, I love myself in your embrace. I love what I am when I'm with you. I love what I am when I'm enfolded in your, the way that you see me. I love this place. So it's, so it's not saying I love myself on any level other than the effect that the father and his presence and his love and his acceptance um, makes us, makes us, and makes us realize when we're in confusion and despair and those kind of things. Put on the garments that I want you to wear. You've been clothed with confusion and despair. I have clothed you with the robes of righteousness, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes. For those in mourning, you pour out the joy, the oil of joy, and for my crimson, give me robes as white. 
bright and pure and for our weakness you have made us all your bride you have clothed us with power from all The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes, my own rightness. Just as filthy rags saturated with the stench of my own way, you saw me coming and you. I'm gonna lose myself in you. I'm gonna lose myself in you. I don't care what men may say. I don't care what men may do. I'm gonna lose myself. Gonna lose myself. Gonna lose myself in you. I'm gonna lose myself. Gonna lose myself. Gonna lose myself in you. I'm gonna lose myself in you I'm gonna lose myself in you I don't care what men may say I don't care what men may do I'm gonna lose myself gonna lose myself I'm gonna lose myself in you I'm gonna lose myself gonna lose myself lose myself in you for beauty for
tears, sweat, and a runny nose all at the same time. All right, if you will, turn with me now to Luke 15, the prodigal son, of which that song was about. Now, you know that's not just a song, right? That was not meant to just be a song. That was meant to be a prayer as we begin our little study here. Luke 15. <clears throat> let's just start most of you know in fact I would assume all of you know the story of the prodigal son so we're just going to start at verse 16 and right here at the beginning just read through <clears throat> um, 20 Luke 15 16 through 20 just speaking of the prodigal he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself he said, how many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The phrase that just stood out to me so much, the, not just stood out to me because I was reading the Bible in some phrase stood out to me, but the meaning that is within that. It's in verse 20, and it just reads, when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. When he was, and that's that song. That's what the song was talking about. You saw me coming, and you ran to meet me there. And we know that man looks on the outward appearance. Man looks at a situation like that, him coming back, <clears throat> and it's completely different than the way the father sees. In fact, the, the scripture, that's uh, 1 Samuel 16, 7. You don't have to turn there, but that's what it is. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. <clears throat> and so what do we do? We try to be like the first son that comes before Samuel to be anointed as king, but it's not David. And we try to build our stature. We try to... We try to become something. We try to look good. We try to uh, present ourselves in a way that, frankly, that leads to promotion and leads to honor and this sort of thing. <clears throat> but the Lord's speaking to Samuel, and he's going, that ain't the one. Bring in the next. That ain't the one. Bring in the next. That ain't the one. Goes through how many of them? Six says, is this it? The Lord, I know the Lord told me to come here. Oh, well, there's one out with the sheep. He's the youngest, but he, I don't think he's the one. As soon as he comes in, the Spirit of God falls, and that's the one. That's the one. And all you got to do is uh, compare those stories when David goes out to bring food to his brothers when Goliath is there and see his old, the oldest one his words, his pride, his attitude. And David was the one again. David was the one again. And so we have an elder son in this story too. <clears throat> um, let's look in verse 25. And in these verses, what we're going to see is that the elder son 
sees the return of a failure, the prodigal coming back. His view, his version, his version of things, his version. It's just wrong. It's just wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's It's not the eyes of the Father. It doesn't comprehend the eyes of the Father, but it does comprehend its own mind and the way that it sees and it believes that it's right. And trust me, nobody's going to change that. He's going to have to see as the father. Because the, the prodigal didn't see correctly either. But he, gets, he does get changed. <clears throat> so verse 25, now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew near, nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. <laughs> what does this mean? It's a party. <laughs> music and dancing it's a party um, and he said unto them thy brother is come and thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he hath received him safe and sound and he was angry and would not go in therefore came his father out and entreated him and he answering said to his father lo these many years do I serve thee neither have I neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment or neither have I transgressed the way that he did. And therefore, I have earned it, and he hasn't earned it. Okay. That mentality is prevalent. <clears throat> and yet, thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. Okay, so his view, it's his view, his, his, his version of events, his version of events is not in line with the Father's. And then verse 20, which is the one that really caught, caught me. I didn't catch it, it caught me. Verse, verse 20, and, it, and just this part right here. But his father saw him. His father saw him. Um, the, the verse reads, but he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. The father had put his seed into that son. The prodigal wasn't the seed. (laughs) Jesus is the seed. Jesus is the fruitful bough. Jesus is the fruitful vine. Jesus. And the father knows that. He knows that. See, he knows that because we didn't put the seed into the prodigal. He did. And so um, he has faith. But just like the elder son, he doesn't have faith in the prodigal. He has faith in the seed. And it can look like to the elder son that he has faith in the prodigal, and he doesn't. He doesn't. It's not that. We're all familiar with... Colossians 1.27, there's the hope, there's the hope, there's the hope, not him, not, not prodigal son, not elder son, the hope is in the seed, Christ in you, that's it, and the father doesn't waver from that because that's his plan, see we waver from it because we think the plan is ministry or something and you know I've got to do great things for God and you're hindering me because you're you know taking what you know the things that you asked for that you said belong to you 
when they actually belong to the Father, and he does say that. He's taken those things of the Father's and da da da, da. And therefore, like the, the, um, the disciples when the, Mary of Bethany was at the feet of Jesus, and they said, you have wasted this. You have wasted it. But you see, the trip that the prodigal son took was not a waste. In fact, I mean, the story bears that out. That's a, that's a, that's a good trip. And we, when we see anybody go through junk or whatever, well, they're off. Okay, well, maybe you're off, you know. I mean, you understand. Um, so the other part was that the father was a great way off looking. He was looking. He's looking. I wrote, uh, what was he looking for? He is scanning for the sun. He's not merely looking for a penitent. Okay, now the, now the scriptures bear that out. So let's, uh, let me read it again, verse 20 and 22. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. Isn't that a great phrase? And had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have. So here's the penance. But the father has already come, run to him, fell on him, kissed him, and received him without it. All right, so someone would say, someone would say, well, brother, repentance is all through the Bible, and you're, you're just perverting the truth because we need to repent. Um, Yes, but repentance isn't where God wants it. He doesn't just want us to repent, you know. I mean, there are some Christians, that's all they do all day long is just repent of every thought and everything that they do. And, da, da, da. and this is what pleases the Father. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry. I mean, that would be like having a spouse, you know, and every time, you know, all day long, they just go, oh, I'm sorry I did this. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Oh, I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for that. You know, I did, oh, I burnt the this, and I did that, and I, da, 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 and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And you're just going, look, would you please just see Jesus? <laughs> just, just pursue the Lord, and you can be sorry, but that won't be the thing, that, the ticket that gets you in his heart. Amen. And that's important. It is important, because it's important to the Father. So I wrote, a mile away, the Father can spot the potential for Jesus to finally come forth in us. I mean, I got more hallelujahs and thank you, Jesus, over on this side here. That's, well, but let me just say I'm going to read it again, and I want you, this side to listen. <laughs> a mile away, the Father can spot the potential for Jesus to finally come forth in us. And he's, and he's looking for that. He's looking for the sun. So he, and he can spot it, and, and I even put, even when the son cannot recognize the potential for Jesus in himself at the moment, the Father can. See? Because he knows those elements. And we don't know those. We're always seeking them. We 10 steps to getting the Father to accept me or something, you know. And uh, trying to do, we're jumping through hoops and we're doing all of this stuff. And he knows. And we can trust the Father to be faithful to his son whom he put in us. Amen? All right. So how is that potential going to be brought forth? Don't worry. Don't worry. The Father will draw it out with the altar and the sacrifice. Okay? So here we go. I'm going to read scriptures and I'm going to emphasize certain things. Verse 23 through 24. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat. Bring it, kill it, and let's eat. Okay? Um, verse 26 through 27. 
Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. So you notice there's a lot of emphasis on this sacrifice. And then finally, verse uh, 29. Um, uh, Lo, these many years I served thee, never transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And here it comes. And yet thou never gavest me a kid, and here it comes. Listen, he's not asking for a sacrifice that I might make merry with my friends. He doesn't understand what this is all about, but the father does, and the, and the prodigal doesn't understand it either. So the father's going to lay the sacrifice out before the son. He's going to lay it out, and he will, he's going to show every part, and all the, he's going to show the inward parts of the sacrifice. It's going to show the inward parts of that sacrifice. And I put down, when that is done, then they will eat the same food for a change, not one eating lamb or sacrifice, if you will, and the other eating hog food. <laughs> okay? All right, so I just want to close with, I want to read three little paragraphs that I wrote after the Lord shared this with me. As the prodigal son, I am filled with something, in parenthesis, the son, that is other than being a prodigal son. I'm filled with something that is other than being what I am, a prodigal son. It fills me and transforms me. When the father opens the sacrifice to me, I breathe a new atmosphere. I no longer want to discover my own possibilities, but to, to discover the Father's heart and how it is that he can see the Son in a prodigal. What son, what son among us is like this, our Father? When he was yet a great way off, my Father saw me. Who shall see the rose when only the thorns of my own life are what people are confronted with? Who can believe for me that the one who has fed himself on swine food will one day dance to the tune of the Father's love? Yes, I will eventually arise and go to my Father's house as you have desired, elder brother. But it will not be my goodness or even my love for the Father that draws me out, but my failures and thorns and lack of bread. I want to see past the surface of others' lives and lose my judgmentalism. If I am to err, then I want to err on the side of love and not on the side of judging. I want to believe that Christ in them is their hope and no longer to believe that all my input and prayers and efforts done in frustration and unbelief make any difference in anyone's life. <laughs> it is only when I get to the environment of my father's presence and his sacrificial view that I change. Take me to the father. Take me to the father. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just pray. Um, we just pray that whatever these words that you gave tonight during this time, this short time, that the spirit and reality of that will overtake us. We long for the time when you draw us out of our world of discovery, trying to find new things to put them down and to save them and to impress people with. And we just want to discover your heart, how it is that you can see prodigals in light of the sun, the sun. And so we ask you to um, not come save us from the hog pen. We ask you to get us sick enough of it and even with wrong motives return back 
and they're not even knowing what is it that we're going to find when the Father shows up. But there we find he loves us, and then he shows us the basis of that love, the sacrifice, opened, showing every part, examining the heart of the sacrifice and the heart of the Father, and then making Mary together. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's take a little break.